Hello, hi and welcome. So the present topic uh, is very very important in your examination point of view. So the topic uh, is that what are the legal provisions uh, relating to alteration of uh, memorandum of association. So there are uh, certain uh, legal provisions which are enshrined as per the section 2 subsection 3 of the Companies Act uh, for uh, a change or for any alteration or any addition, omission and substitution to any of the clauses in Memorandum of Association. So section 13 of uh, the Companies Act 2013 provides the provisions that deals with the uh, alteration of the memorandum. So dear students here you need to understand there are about uh, 12 uh, points that are given for a student to appreciate the provisions that are giving a complete idea about the alteration to any clause in the memorandum of association. You know that we have a name clause, we have a registered office clause and we have a, a capital clause or some other clauses, subscription clause etc. So all these clauses if it is been altered in all such cases there is a prescribed provisions which are to be complied with. So what is uh, the first point we have to remember is alteration by special resolution. Students, the first point is that for alteration of any of the clauses to memorandum of association can be affected only with the uh, special resolution passed in the appropriate meeting by the members of the company. A company may alter the provisions of its memorandum with approval of uh, the members by special resolution. That is uh, the first point which talks about the provisions for alteration of memorandum. The second point is that uh, regarding uh, name change. You all know that there is a name clause in the memorandum of association uh, for any change in the name of the company that can be affected only with the approval of uh, the central government in writing. So here one point is that for any addition or deletion of the word private in the name of the company does not require the approval of the central government. This is the point students are expected to remember. So for change of your name, the approval of the central government is required. But for all for addition or deletion of the word private to the name of the company not requires the approval of the central government. So no such approval shall be necessary in such a case. So this point students have to remember. And dear students, another point one has to remember with reference to the company's rules 2014 is that, see in two cases, the alteration of name is not allowed under the rules 2014. One is that if the company fails to file annual returns with the registrar, then such companies are not allowed to alter its name. And the second rule says that if any company fails to pay back the matured de deposits or debentures or interest thereon, even in such a case also, the company is not allowed to alter its name under rules 2014. So, students have to understand that 
the name of the company can be altered only with the approval of the central government however no such approval is required for addition or deletion of a ward private that is the first aspect in the second point and uh, apart from that the company rules also says that if a company fail to file the annual return it is not allowed to alter the name and if a company also if it failed to repay the matured deposits or debentures or interest thereon even in such a case also the company is not allowed to alter its name however the rules provided for after filing the returns or after filing after repayment of the deposits or debentures or interest thereon they can go for alteration of the name so this is only a condition which has been prescribed in rules 2014 for alteration of the name so dear students this is the second point and the second provision with regard to alteration of a name of a company so after the change of the name what is to happen consequentially so the changed name should be entered in the register of companies by the register of companies in the name of the in the place of the old company name so in the place of the old company name the new name which is an altered name should be written in the register of companies by the registrar but the registrar can do so upon issue of a fresh certificate of incorporation with the new name and uh, the change in the name shall be complete and effective only on the issue of uh, such a certificate so that is uh, the third point with regard to the alteration of memorandum of association and dear students you also know that there is a registered office clause so in case of uh, alteration of a memorandum relating to the place of registered office from one state to another shall not have any effect unless it is approved by the central government so like a change of the name of a company for change of the registered office from one state to the another state what is required the approval of the central government is required the approval of the central government will be given upon an application made in the such form and manner as may be prescribed by the company so when an application is made by the company for getting approval of change of the registered office here the central government uh, shall dispose of such application within a period of 60 days within a period of 60 days the central government shall dispose of such application giving approval or not for such a request to change the registered office of the company however dear students here before passing such order within 60 days by the central government the central government should satisfy itself about the following three aspects for giving an order of change of the registered office from one state to the another state so what is the first point that has to be satisfied before issuing such order is that the alteration has the consent of uh, the creditors debenture holders and other persons concerned with the company so the first point is the first point says that it requires the consent of uh, the creditors debenture holders and other creditors who are concerned with the change of the registered office isn't it or not if your person is changing the house from one city to the other city or once one country to the other country who are more concerned the people who lend money to him because tomorrow he is not available to collect the money that was lent to him 
In the same way, here also the consent of the creditors, debenture holders, and the other uh, creditors should be obtained by the central government to satisfy itself to issue an order allowing the company to move its registered office from one state to the another state. That is the first point, students. Very simple. See, and the second point uh, uh, the central government should satisfy itself is that sufficient provision should be maintained by the company either for a discharge of all its debts and obligations. So, the company should maintain a sufficient provision for a discharge before moving its registered office from one state to the another state. And uh, apart from that, or the company should make an adequate security adequate security so either of these three are to be sat are to be done by the company in order to satisfy the central government for giving an order to allow the company to move the registered office from one state to the another this is the fifth point my dear students you have to remember so to satisfy the clause is or not and so, which means to say, either of these three will satisfy the central government to issue a favorable order for moving uh, the registered office. And the sixth point says that filing with the registrar. What is to be filed with the registrar? The company has to file with the registrar. Uh, in relation to any alteration of its memorandum, a special resolution passed by the company under subsection 1 and the approval of the central government under subsection 2 if the alteration involves uh, any change in the name of the company. So, what it is required? The company for uh, any change in the name, it has to file with the registrar a special resolution that is the first one and uh, apart from the special resolution approval of the central government also should be filed with the registrar and uh, the second seventh point says that and the filing of the certified copy of the order with the register of the states so in case if the register office is moved from one state to the another state Filing of the certified copy of the order with the register of the state. Who issues that certified copy of the order? The order that was given by the central government should be filed, should be filed with the registrar, where an alteration of the memorandum results in transfer of the registered office of the company from one state to another, a certified copy of the order of the central government approving the alteration shall be filed with the company it shall be filed by the company with the register of each of the states this one should remember with both the registers so which mean to say from the existing uh, uh, jurisdiction to the new jurisdiction so existing register of companies to the new place of registered office uh, jurisdiction register also the company has to uh, submit the order say for example if there is a company in Ch hyderabad if it is moving its registered office to chennai in tamil nadu in such a case the order of the central government approving the alteration shall be filed with the register of companies in hyderabad and also the register of companies in chennai so this is uh, the mandatory provision as a point number seven the company has to comply with and dear students and what will happen after filing that the next point says that issue of a fresh certificate of incorporation already there is a one certificate of incorporation and uh, where the new office is situated the register of that state uh, shall issue a fresh certificate of incorporation indicating the alteration. So, that is, that is the eighth point. So, in case of uh, change in the object of the company, see, imagine we have an object clause also to the memorandum of association. When a company which raised money from the public through prospectus and still has any unutilized amount out of uh, 
the money so raised shall not change its uh, objects uh, for which it is raised the money through prospectus unless a special resolution through a postal ballot is passed by the company. Dear students, you have to understand this point very carefully. To alter the objects class, if the company raised a money from the public through prospectus and still some of the money raised so is unutilized and lied with the company, in all such cases, the company shall not change its objects for which it is raised the money through prospect unless a special resolution through postal ballot is passed by the company and also and also what is to be done the company has to do certain mandatory things for changing its objects in case if some amount is unspent by the company so the first thing is that the company shall publish in the newspaper stating that stating that the company is going to change its objects of uh, uh, for which the money is raised so when in, uh, in two newspapers it is to be published uh, students one is uh, in english newspaper and the other one is in vernacular language vernacular language means nothing but a regional language yeah, and uh, the, the where the registered office is situated whatever is the re regional language in such a language also the company should make uh, a publishing uh, should ensure uh, publishing the news of change of the objects clause and the same should also be placed on the website of the company see dear friends are not only publishing in new two newspapers but the same is also should be placed in the website of the company indicating therein the justification for such a change why the object is to be changed should be justified should be justified and published and after publishing it it should be kept in the website as well in case some of the shareholders are not given their consent for change of the objects for all of them an opportunity to exit must be given by the promoters and the shareholders having the control see this is uh, the beauty of the supervision objects can be altered comfortably however if the company raises uh, some money if some of the amount is uh, not spent uh, for which the money is raised uh, in such a situation if the company wants to change its objects clause in such a case the company has uh, two mandatory things to do one is that it has to publish the justification in two newspapers one in english and the other in vernacular language apart from that the same should also be placed in the website of the company that is the first condition dear students and the second condition is that some of the dissenting shareholders whoever is not happy with the change of the object clause of the memorandum should be provided an opportunity to exit by giving back their money by the promoters and the shareholders are having the control in line with the regulations to be specified by the securities exchange board of india that is a sebi so this is the ninth and very very beautiful point which is given in a simply understandable way and the tenth point says that register to certify the registration on the alteration of the objects so the registrar of companies uh, will certify the registration on the alteration of the objects uh, and uh, the period is that within 30 days uh, he will do so and within 30 days he will uh, give, certify the alteration of the objects and uh, all the alterations whatever is done should be 
should be registered with the register of companies. No alteration made under this section shall have any effect until it has been registered in accordance with the provisions of this section. That is the 11th point. And the 12th point is uh, says that only a member have a right to participate in the divisible profit of the company, dear. Only a member have a right to participate in the divisible profits of the company. Any alteration to of the memorandum in case of a company limited by guarantee and not having share capital intending to give any person a right to participate in the divisible profits otherwise than as a member shall be void. This is the point regarding the divisible profits. In case of a company uh, guarantee having the limit uh, having the guaranteed capital if the person is not a member of the company who is not subscribed to the memorandum of association if the any if any such person is given right to participate in the divisible profits that will be void these are the 12 simple and beautiful points that are given under an alteration to the memorandum of association so dear friends these are the provisions that are dealing with alteration to some of the important clauses to the memorandum of association here provisions for alteration to the clauses of memorandum is different from the procedure for alteration of clauses to the memorandum of association in the forthcoming topics we are going to discuss about the alteration of uh, uh, the register, uh, registered office clause to the memorandum of association and as well as we are also going to talk about the procedure for alteration of name clause to the memorandum of association. There we will talk more about the procedural aspects. But in the current topic, we discussed about the provisions, not the procedures. Provisions for alteration of uh, various, uh, pro uh, various uh, clauses to the memorandum of association. If a student gives this uh, 12 points answer for a question which is asking about uh, the provisions dealing with alteration to the memorandum of association, he will get full marks without uh, uh, getting even a single mark deducted because it is the prescribed answer as per your study material. So dear students, don't miss uh, a, not even a single out of this dozen points. Uh, if it is asked uh, any question about the provisions uh, of uh, alteration to memorandum of association, you have to deter down all the points one after the other, which will fetch you very, very beautiful marks. So this is about that topic. And next we will go for the alteration to the articles of association. The next topic is that what are the provisions relating to alteration of articles? The previous one is alteration to the memorandum. This is about alteration of articles, which is a very, very nice and very simple one here. Broadly, we are going to talk about four points only. Dear students, uh, alteration to the memorandum was discussed under section 13, whereas alteration of articles is discussed under section 14 of the Companies Act 2013. Where's the companies with the power to alter or add to its articles? So, section 14 empowers the company to alter its article. A company cannot divest itself of these powers. Matters as to which the memorandum is silent can be dealt with by alteration of articles. Wherever some matters are silent in the memorandum, dear students, that can be dealt through an alteration of articles. Section 14 of the Companies Act also specifically says that to alter or add to its articles, the company law with respect to alteration of articles is given as under. The first thing is that alteration will be done by a special resolution. So, in case of a alteration to the memorandum, 
or in case of an alteration to the articles of association both cases it will be done only by a special resolution my dear friends see here alteration by special resolution of any of the articles of association wherein the rules and regulations of uh, managing the company is given will be subject to the provisions of the companies act and uh, the conditions contained in its memorandum if in, if any a company may by a special resolution alter its uh, articles see dear students you have to understand it to alter the articles to pass a special resolution before that two conditions are to be satisfied what is that it should be subject to the provisions of the companies act 2013 only you can alter the articles of association and apart from that the conditions whatever that is contained in its memorandum of association both of them are to be satisfied to pass a special resolution in order to give an effect to change of companies articles of association this is the first and the most most significant point a student has to remember has to remember so every alteration should be subject to the provisions of the companies act and the conditions contained in the memorandum then only company can pass a special resolution in order to alter its articles very good so the next second point is that alteration to include conversion of company an alteration of article can also include alteration of uh, uh, conversion of a company having effect conversion of uh, a private company into a public company and a public company into a private company so to convert a private company into a public company or a public company into a private company that would lead to uh, alteration of articles of association however dear students to convert uh, a public company into a private company for such a conversion the approval of the central government is required my dear students for conversion of a public company into a private company the approval of the central government is required if any of the conversions are pending with the tribunal the tribunal has a power to dispose of uh, all such cases uh, as per the applicable law at the commencement of uh, such a provision so the third point is uh, talking about filing of alteration with the registrar once uh, the special resolution is passed the uh, the company has an obligation to file the alteration and a copy of the order of the central government approving such an alternation with the registrar together with a printed copy of altered articles see printed copy of altered articles should be filed with the registrar within a period of 15 days within a period of 15 days in such a manner as prescribed in the prescribed manner it is to be completed any alteration made shall be valid any alteration made shall be valid only any only of uh, the articles registered as above shall subject to the provisions of this act uh, and be valid if it is uh, if it were originally contained in the articles right this is the fourth point my dear students apart from these four points apart from these four points one more point you also can add while answering this is an alteration whenever any alteration takes place to the articles of association such a alteration must be effected in each and every copy of the articles of association in each and every copy that such a particular alteration must be noted if the company fails to note such an alteration and if the company issues such articles of association to any third party which is not incorporated registered alterations in all such cases see there is a penalty of 1000 rupees for each copy issued without such alteration 
If uh, 10 copies are issued to the third parties upon their request, if 10 of them not having the uh, necessary alterations made were not incorporated, for each copy, 1000 rupees uh, is the penalty. So, which means to say the company can be fined uh, to the extent of rupees 10,000, 1000 rupees each for each copy. Dear students, these are the points under alteration to articles of association which was given under section 14 of the company site.